So, yeah, basically, well, Guy is setting up the... Oh, it's set up. So, what's the video uh, it's about is to show that not only that AdMob works well to help your business and enable you to share content for free for your users while enabling you to get a sustainable revenue to keep um, re-improving your content. It's about how the advertising ecosystem is an integral part of your business. Sometimes, I, I, I mean, I, I have a lot of startup friends and I have a lot of developer friends. They all have very good ideas, but some of the gap that I foresee is that how will their product enable them to earn so that they can keep producing more stuff so that they can focus on doing what they love and keep building instead of thinking like, what should I eat tomorrow? How do I earn so that I can sleep? HDB flat very expensive rent and so on and so on. So the good news is that the time is now. Advertising uh, industry is growing. In fact, it's set up to increase by 3.2 times by four years. And in most key markets such as US and UK, over 50% of the total revenue is actually from ads. So, so yeah, if you want to be part of $62 billion, of potential advertising revenue by 2014. Um, it's something that you should consider, definitely. And in terms of monetization with apps, there are always two types of monetization that is very famous. One is in-app purchase, that's why I was asking if there is a game developer here. And the other one is, of course, advertising itself. It comes to the trend that we always observe. You know for sure, our user like free apps, we like freebies. And it has been a consistent trend over the years. More than 90% of the apps that is downloaded are free. So for those of you who are thinking about paid apps, maybe you wanna reconsider. And another thing is that while in app purchase has been growing very significantly, we know for sure that it's not really a holistic monetization. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm saying that it's great. But what if you can do a hybrid monetization? What if you can segregate 1.5% of your mobile app spender on in-app purchase items with the 98% of the people who will never spend on your apps? And what if you can monetize with both of them with data? And the answer for that will be answered by Guy. I'm just a preview. <laughs> And this is just the last slide of my part. The next question is, when do you start monetizing? Do you start when you have one user? Or do you start when you have 50, 100, or 1 million? Actually, this kind of gimmick, I'm just gonna ask. Start now. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. So if you look at this graph, this is actually a quite common graph um, about daily active users, so meaning that you know, sometimes people download apps but they never use anymore. And people, every single person that logs into your app it's, will contribute under daily active users. Imagine if the owner of these apps start monetizing on July. And he, they will basically lose the revenue from January to July. Imagine if they start from beginning. They could easily earn 30% more that year. And they can use that 30% of revenue to either invest on marketing, growing more users, or perhaps just make a new maps, new features, something along that line. So yeah, without further ado, now you know how important it is to start monetizing. Guy would be telling you how AdMob can empower you with a lot of features that uh, enable you to do a data-driven data.
Australia and New Zealand in growing the animal products around that kind of area. Um, I'm also happy to say that I will be actually moving to Singapore mid next month, and so I'm very excited again to be able to chat with you. You guys, don't read though, there's no surprise there for me. <laughs> Here we go. So today uh, we're talking about you about two specific themes. Um, hopefully you haven't heard these before, but the, these these themes are also talked about on the on the ad, app monetization uh, video that is circulating uh, since IO as well. So a lot of the things that I'm talking to you about today were actually talked about at IO just a few months ago. And so these two key themes are firstly maximizing each revenue opportunity through what we're starting to call smart monetization, and also how AdMob is making it easier essentially to ads into your apps and I really also think that the, the, the time has never been better for app developers such as of which half of the audience are here and hopefully the other half are aspiring app developers the time has really never been better to build a business and build an app business I think in days gone by uh, it, it's been really an interesting period to be able to build an app and perhaps see how well it's going to go and there's been a lot of successes out there we've seen them in the news we've seen them kind of in the charts as well but there's also been a lot of apps that haven't really succeeded at all and we know that there's probably about a million apps in each one of the stores and so I, I really truly believe that the time has never been better to build a successful app business not just an app so before I go through these two points I want to uh, begin by highlighting three things that I think could really help uh, you guys or for those that, that are more heavily involved in apps uh, to increase your chance of app success and so firstly, uh, I think it's important to be, really be able to realise the value of each of your users. Each user has, has a lot of value, even the ones that don't necessarily spend. So what we're starting to think about here is not necessarily revenue-based value or value in terms of dollars and cents, uh, but it's really about the, the value that a user can bring to your business or to your app. And, and so uh, therefore, you really need to be able to think about how you can treat these users differently. And so also keep in mind that in-app purchase, uh, which, which Jeannie kind of talked about as well, is just one way to measure value. Uh, another way is that if you can look at your business model and the metrics that you've got in terms of the success that you're looking for, uh, it's really easy to miss out on other types of value. And so, well, here it comes now. So uh, we talked about in-app purchase and we talked about uh, a little bit about how you can see revenue from an ads perspective, which I'll dive into a little bit more. But the third kind of bucket, which is easily forgotten, are those users that aren't actually creating the dollar and cents type value, but they're also uh, creating value in terms of perhaps the K factor. So that's that virality, that social element of your app. And so really be able to concentrate on these. So what if there was a perfect world where you could essentially be able to understand the value that each one of these users are contributing to your business, to your apps, and be able to treat these users in, in an appropriate uh, kind of way. So the second kind of thing to take away is the, is the importance of mobile app analytics. Um, so before we saw that there was about half the room that were involved in apps, either developing or in a business themselves. So I guess of the audience as well, how many of those app businesses are using analytics, some sort of analytics provider? We've got one over here, two, that's not even 20% of the audience, three, oh, oh, please say 50%, okay, that's fine, maybe after this you can go and do you know. Um, and so yeah, what, what we've actually seen in this survey is that about 21% of app developers were actually actively using a mobile app analytics platform. Um, of course, Google offers these as well, and there's a number of other competitors, but what we're trying to say is the importance in using analytics and being able to understand what's happening. Because what we don't really want to see is uh, we don't want you to be a data dragon sitting a, 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 upon your, your tall mountain surrounded by all the, all the, the golden data treasure um, and, and hoarding that. Because your app is collecting lots and lots of useful information. So use this data and, and, and don't build it like the dragon on top of the mountain. You can use, really use app analytics to help discover what's broken within your app, how users are engaging with your app, and ultimately how you can grow and evolve your app based on how your users are experiencing it. Um, and, and this, of course, down the track, leads ultimately to revenue and ultimately value. And then you can continue to grow your business. And, and one of the third points is, is, is maximising ad yield. Uh, and so what this really means is when you show ads, how, when and if you show ads, how can you earn the most from every single impression? Um, and for those that aren't 
familiar with what an impression is? Actually, this will help me out. Who knows what an impression is? Oh, okay. Okay, just a few. So an impression is each time an ad actually shows within the app. So obviously it's a bit of an advertising kind of industry term, but essentially an impression is one ad displaying to, to the user. So sorry if that confuses you. Um, so I think it's, as part of this maximising, you will really consider how you can use a mixture of different ad formats uh, as part of your strategy as well. Because ultimately a one-size-fits-all approach won't necessarily be the optimal way to, to, to maximise your yield or maximise your revenue. Um, just like, for example, showing the little banners, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys would have seen perhaps in your favourite game, if that's free, uh, is a little strip up, up, up at the top or the bottom of the screen as well. Um, so ultimately that's not necessarily the best way to, to monetize all of your audience. Some users may prefer to click on that little banner, um, others may prefer to watch a video, which ultimately also provides revenue for you as well. Oh, there's the mouse. Um, so essentially, different ad formats provide different levels of value. So, and, and kind of to, to reinforce that point, um, one of the ads that we've got is called an interstitial. So, who, who's played mobile app games before? Surely this is everybody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Crossy Road, good Australian app, that one. Um, <laughs> Flappy Birds, Fruit Ninja, another good Australian app. AA, anyway, there's lots of them. Um, so interstitials are the ad unit that appears and takes up the whole screen, the whole mobile screen. Um, so for those that are, of you who've been using, playing a lot of these games, a lot of gaming user, uh, developers use them very successfully. So successfully that uh, we see of those that use interstitials versus those that don't, those that are using interstitials can generate about 20% more uh, revenue, which is, you know, it's significant. And so one of, the, one of the other points as well is uh, the ability to understand the importance of how you can maximise revenue uh, through a yield optimization platform. So what this essentially means is um, AdMob is obviously one way of having ads in your app. Um, Facebook do another, Sharpers do another, in Mobi, blah, 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 the list goes on and on and on. Um, what we're kind of talking about here is you understanding the... Uh, understanding the importance of being able to balance multiple networks that compete to ultimately serve an impression or an ad to your users. Um, because being able to balance these networks based on the geography or the location of your users, based on the individual ad economy or ecosystem in those areas as well, is really, really important. And so not all ads are, I mean, not all ad networks are, are, are born equal, I guess. And so what a yield optimization platform um, or what we call mediation, what that really does is allows you to uh, maximise the value of each individual impression and make sure that you're serving the most valuable impression to your users. So largely, take a scientific approach is what we're kind of saying here um, and, and understand what each network is providing to your uh, audience. So now let's go into the, the meat of this a bit more in terms of smart monetization. So and what we really want to be able to do within the, the Google AdMob team is to help you find the right monetization opportunity, the one that pays you the most ultimately. And so uh, this could be an in-app purchase transaction, which is very successful. Uh, users love it. Uh, developers love it as well. So it's a good way to, 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 to make some really significant revenue and understand a lot about the way your users are engaging with the app. Um, and for those that don't know what in-app purchase is, it's... Uh, it, it, so let's say you're playing a game or, or, or it's a productivity app. An in-app purchase essentially is a, a, somebody can pay a few dollars, for example, to unlock an additional feature in that app. Um, and so it's, it's provided by Apple and Google Play as well. And so uh, being able to balance in-app purchases plus ads uh, is, is a really important way to maximise that yield as well. So AdBob uh, has, a, has a smart monetization digital platform, uh, it's not just an ad server, but it allows you to feed in all of these different opportunities uh, and then Ad, Ad, AdMob itself can understand this information and ultimately provide the best, uh, the best yielding opportunity for your users themselves. And this will happen, happen obviously in a fraction of a second as well. And so what we kind of call this is audience aware, so being able to provide something that's specifically related to the audience. So let's tap this one down a bit more and bring all of these up. So essentially, a new feature that was uh, uh, announced at I.O. that we're really, really excited about that puts this logic into action is what we're calling in-app purchase ads. 
Uh, it, it helps you promote in-app purchase items or the in-app purchase offers to your users so that you can grow in-app purchase revenue. And, and I'll give you a good example in a moment. So AdMob, what it does is it automatically figures out which users in your app are likely to be buyers. Uh, and so it does that with some algorithm and some data-based input that, that we understand from you know, all the Google data that we've got. And um, it automatically figures out which users are, are, are likely to be buyers and, and, and uses this as targeting information for the specific offer itself. Um, and so AdMob understand, it understands not just the user spend behaviour, but also their behaviour in the app. Um, what's really great about this specific feature as well is that um, because it splits up in-app purchase ads versus regular ads, is that it really allows you to uh, maximise the ads that you're also uh, displaying to users. What we tend to see, and for those that have experienced in-app purchases as well over time within their apps, is that about, on average, about 5% of the, uh, the consumer uh, kind of audience uh, actually make an in-app purchase. So that's 5%, that's, 5%, that's tiny. That means there's 95% of your users potentially not making an in-app purchase. But generally how a lot of app developers are using the in-app purchase technology is that they're doing a blanket campaign to everybody. And so let's say in a game I've got to level 30 and all of you in the room have got to level 30 as well. Uh, to, to skip that because it's too hard, we want to pay $2.50. But everybody in here, I don't know, there's probably about 100, a bit over 100 people in the room now, um, not everybody wants to pay $2 to get past this little barrier. 5% is what we're kind of saying, of people who want to actually pay, and that means there's 95% of the audience which isn't actually providing any value. So, what if there was a perfect world where this could be maximised? Um, and, and, and this is part of the feature that we're talking about as well. Um, we've got an example that I'll show you uh, from a South Korean developer called Lunasoft. And so this is something that was pretty cool that they did. Um, so, we ran two experiments with them over, it was only a, a 10 day period or something like that. Um, experiment one, which you can see up the top, um, showed an arbitrary sample of users and in-app purchase offer wall. So this was the, the, the kind of uh, the standard state, this is what most people do, scenario one. They uh, displayed that in-app purchase offer to, they delivered 145,000 impressions. So 145,000 of these offers appeared. Uh, and the developer ultimately uh, made $107. I can't remember how, how much the actual offer was, but it was, you know, I don't know, it was, it was a few dollars or whatever. Um, the yield on that was 74 cents per 1,000 impression. So 74 cent eCPM, if, if you kind of understand the, the ad, ad um, the ad advertising they go on that. So it's, yeah, that's not terribly good. But what we know is that in of that 145,000 impressions, only 5% of those users were likely actually spending. So that's, that's standard case. So the second scenario, or the second experiment, was to, to have the same in-app purchase offer, but this time only show it to users that our, our, our algorithm believes are, that, that they are a likely spender. And so this takes into account they've spent in the past and a few other signals as well that the kind of Google beast understands. And the results were, were, were pretty impressive as well. Um, that offer was only showed 6,000 times, so 6,000 impressions. And so what that, starts to, what that starts to say is that of, of the original 145,000, only 6,000 ads were actually relevant. Um, and, and then that ultimately converted to $140. So that's pretty good already. I mean, straight away, they're making more money. They're making uh, $33 more dollars than they were before on the same kind of inventory. But what's even better about this is that it, it pumped back into the system 139,000 extra impressions. Um, and what they were able to do with those extra impressions is serve an ad in its place. So remember how I was saying that 95% of this audience weren't going to pay for that $2.50 or whatever it was uh, upgrade? That means that 95% that of the audience is now seeing an ad. And then if we just kind of do it back in the envelope calculation, um, in this case, it, it delivered $587 worth of ad revenue to that developer. So, so that's really, really impressive. And so this is, this is kind of... Um, level of intelligence, I guess, that our system is using to be able to do this. And so ultimately what this is providing to you as developers and, and to Lunasoft who, who ran this test is ultimately more revenue. Um, ultimately more satisfied users as well because they weren't all being given the same offer of $2.50 to upgrade and that sort of thing when they weren't interested. Uh, and so ultimately everybody was happy. Um, so it's very exciting to do. And this is all available in the AdMob uh, product now. 
So it's very easy to set up. So kind of flowing on from this, and we're still talking about smart monetization, it's the, it's the importance of app analytics as well. Um, a lot of you who have been involved in either web, website development um, or even app development as well may be familiar with Google Analytics, been around for a little while. But app analytics is a, is a, is a, it's a key way to understand your users. And so this is of course available in uh, AdMob as well. Um, Oh, it's tightly integrated into AdMob, and you can access a fully featured mobile app analytics tool within your app, actual AdMob account itself, all powered by uh, Google Analytics. So once you have all of this data starting to flow through AdMob, it opens up a world of opportunity to be able to create customised experiences for your users. And, and this really begins with a tool that we call Audience Builder. And this enables you to segment your audience based on their actual behaviour. So, for example, uh, in your app you might have casual users who, who don't spend, so remember 95%, casual users who don't spend and it'd be great to be able to actually separate them. So this is starting to look a bit differently from um, the, the in-app purchase stuff that we're doing before. Um, so uh, it, it was announced at I.O. Uh, this audience build a feature which enables you to show ads to some users and hide ads from the rest. And so. I'll show you a quick video in a second, but remember 95% weren't actually responding to the in-app purchases, but 5% were. So what if you, these 5% who have actually given you $2.50 or whatever, um, they've now provided value in that form. So why not remove any future ads from being displayed to them? Because you know they're a spender, and that can, keep to continue, to, can continue to encourage them to spend. So this will hopefully work. There's no sound as well, so I don't need to translate. <laughs> so this is a, this is essentially in the AdMob in the AdMob system itself. So what we'll see, fingers crossed, we'll see it. Yeah, here we go. So what you see is, sorry, it's blurry. Um, clicking on essentially the app that's, that, that this person has set up in, in the AdMob system, and now they're deciding who they want to target the specific ads to. So on the left. We've got Carl, he's a non-purchaser, he's not bought anything in, in that purchase. And so you can see up the top there's that little banner ad. So Carl's being targeted an ad because Carl's not providing any in-app purchase revenue. And here's Linda. Linda is a purchaser, she's purchased in the past. Um, so why don't we reward uh, Linda and hopefully she's going to purchase with us down the track by not displaying an ad to her as well. Because we know she's worth more than perhaps the, the, the couple of dollars that we'll get from that ad. Let's make it Uh, so that's Carl and Linda. We'll go to the next one. Hopefully it works. Excellent. So, so that's app analytics. So that's that's something that's pretty cool. And this stuff is all announced at, at, at IO. Um, so again, smart monetization. Thing. Showing the right ad at the right time is really important in running a smart business, as we're starting to talk about a lot more now. Um, with AdMob mediation, 